five very different restaurants in Providence, Rhode Island are competing for my million dollar review. It's a little bit spicy. Ah! Pricey or cheap, they're all contenders. But I'm not easily impressed. If you can't make me a decent omelet, I might as well just leave. Who will stand out? 3,000 different restaurants. That has never happened to me. And who will feel the heat? My advice to them would be to get a serious chef as soon as possible. Hey! No, it's not funny. No, it's not funny. I'm Giles Corrin. As restaurant critic for the London Times, I've become the most powerful critic in Europe. Restaurant owners fear me because a bad review from me could shut them down. But a good one could bump up their profits by a million dollars. With my researcher, Julia, I'm in North America looking for restaurants worthy of my review, which could change their business and lives forever. This week, I'm in Providence, Rhode Island. Much like Boston to the north, Providence is a 400-year-old oceanside city with blue-collar roots and an Ivy League university. But what makes Providence unique is that the restaurant scene here is so strong, it's leading the economy out of recession. But all I care about is finding the one restaurant here that's worthy of my million-dollar review. So what exactly am I looking for? Most boring, pompous food critics will tell you that there are three things that matter. Food, atmosphere, and service. But my readers deserve much more than that. I'm looking for an exceptional eating experience, and I don't care if it's the most expensive restaurant in town or a hole in the wall serving up one incredible dish. But I can't eat everywhere. So my researcher, Julia, has narrowed down the city's food scene to five restaurants that are doing amazing things. Then I decide which one deserves my million-dollar review. Thank you. Thanks. You got yourself a donut? No, I read somewhere that there's more donut shops per capita than anywhere else in the US. Really? In Providence. It's very nice. But I haven't flown across an ocean to eat donuts. I've got five really great restaurants for you to go to. The first one you're going to is called North. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna say right off the bat that it's a hipster place, but don't judge it based on that. The food's really great. It's this Asian-inspired cuisine. Asian-inspired, so what is Asian hipster fusion? Yeah, you could say that. On the downside, hipster. On the upside, Chinese, my favorite food. Yes, so North is in the west side of Providence. It used to be a rough part of town, but it's coming back from that. It's a very dynamic neighborhood. It's changed a ton. John Toonchester and chef James Mark opened North two years ago, and they pride themselves on their very unconventional business model. I'd say North is a, like a non-traditional American restaurant. Uh, we don't really have any rules as far as what we can serve or what we can't serve. Um, it just has to be delicious. Unlike a lot of restaurateurs, making money isn't their main priority. They want to give back to their community. We donate 50 cents from every single dish that we sell to the food bank. I mean, we donated $20,000 last year. Uh, it's, you know, almost double my salary. Their challenge is that while North is busy, it's housed in a really tiny space. We have five tables and like a seven seat bar, so it does limit the amount of money we can make. James and John need your review because they want to bring in more diners from outside the Providence area and expand their business while staying true to their charitable mission. I don't care if they're the most charitable hipsters on earth. This is still a hipster restaurant, and that puts me on edge. The thing I hate about hipsters is that we're cooler than you attitude they all seem to have. So you usually don't sit people, you usually just kind of, excuse me, call me, we're doing the, the organic thing, right? And there you go. They're actually too cool to seat me. They just want me to find my own table. Great, I'll, I'll sit down. We don't normally seat people, he said. I hope they feed people. So his menu on this sort of mingy little bit of grey paper, he wouldn't even give me a whole sheet of A4. Menus should be larger than a postcard. Size does matter. I've got some questions about the drinks. Sure. I don't understand them. OK. Fedra, I woke up like this. That's the um, Beyonce song. Oh, is it? The hallmark of every hipster restaurant seems to be a bizarre drinks list. What does Moxie and Fernet, New Dad's Nightly Medicine, mean? So Moxie is a soda from Maine, and then right. we mix in a shot of Fernet with it. But why is it New Dad's Nightly Medicine? Fernet has, like, a reputation right now for being, like, really hip. If it's hip here, why don't I have that? Not an especially hip crowd. I mean, if you see those two at the bar there, I would actually venture to say that I'm cooler than they are. There's the bloke in the check shirt sitting at the bar, tweeting something. Sitting in a bar, gonna have some noodles. It doesn't strike me as especially hit. <laughs> they've decorated the place rather strangely with ropes. I guess it's meant to be a nautical feature, but to a restaurant critic who feels like he'd rather hang himself than stay here another five minutes, it's a slightly dangerous touch. 
No sign of my waitress for quite a long time now. Hard to explain in a place this small. Then, just as I'm thinking I've been completely forgotten, something amazing happens. Can I? The woman at the next table, clearly sensing my sense of abandonment, just offered me some of her food. We order way too much. I'm serious. Really? Yeah. Is that tofu? No, it's sweet potatoes. Is it? Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. You're all already more solicitous than the entire staff of this restaurant. That's amazing. Thank you very much. That has never happened to me before. In 15 years as a restaurant critic, in 3,000 different restaurants, I have never had the people at the next table spontaneously seeing my hunger and evident discomfort come over and feed me some of their food. That's turned this from being one of the more uncomfortable restaurant experiences for me of recent times to possibly one of the most interesting. But how will the rest of the food measure up? Because I certainly can't give my million dollar review to another diner. The sweet potato is fantastic. Oh, look, there's a radish. Nice. Luckily for North, my waitress finally appears, ready to take my order. So the banana noodles are really great. Ham biscuits, so it's like little sandwiches, kind of. I noticed that the almost boneless fried chicken is for two to four. Is it possible to make it for one? Um, it's, it's a whole chicken. I guess that's a no, then. Or she's saying, if you want to eat a whole chicken all by yourself, old guy, go ahead. Either way, it looks like I'm getting a whole chicken. So I'll have a whole chicken, the bok choy, and the dan dan noodles, and the ham sandwiches. Sounds great. What a novel idea. I get to eat something I actually ordered, rather than something from another table. <laughs> How exciting. For the ham biscuits with turmeric, ginger, mustard. So enjoy. As you can probably see, I think they've been a bit stingy on the ham. I see on the menu they're called tiny ham biscuits. Maybe it's a tiny amount of ham biscuits. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the lids off both of them and then put it together make one quite tasty ham biscuit. Mmm. So, so far we know that they serve you the makings of a good meal. You just have to put it together yourself. A bit like flat pack furniture. It's a bok choy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's with a fermented tamarind sauce, puffed rice, and here's the dan dan noodles. Fermented chilies, rice noodles, ground goat, squid. Careful, because there's whole chili peppers, so really, really spicy. So there's puffed rice there. Kind of weird. Breakfast thrown in with the uh, greens. Yeah, not bad. Here I have goat and squid. The goat is ground in amongst the squid. Very spicy. I think I've ruined my whole evening. I love spicy food. Problem is, it doesn't always love me. Excuse me. I, I ate a, three or four of these bird's eye chilies, which are delicious but quite strong. What's in there? Is that an ice machine? It's is a that... frozen draft. Can I have some? Yeah. And then just throw it down my neck and... Yeah, can I have a tub of it to sit in? They often say if you get it to the jugular, the blood flows through the ice, round your brain, cools the brain. Is this where I finally lose all credibility? This week, I'm on America's East Coast in one of New England's oldest cities, Providence, Rhode Island. It's a blue-collar town with an Ivy League school and is now nationally renowned for its vibrant food scene. Tonight, I'm in the west side of Providence, eating at Asian fusion hipster restaurant North. I felt completely abandoned by the staff from the moment I walked in. A neighbouring diner even took pity on me and fed me some of her own meals. Sweet potatoes. Thank you very much. But North has got its act together and served up some delicious and seriously hot food. Oh, very spicy. I think I've ruined my whole evening. And on top of that, I may have ruined my brain with one of North's frozen drinks. Brain freeze! Brain freeze! You'd think I'd never eaten in a restaurant before. A couple of chilies and a bit of ice. Oh. Despite my debilitating brain injury, I'm soldiering on. I've ordered one more dish at North, and this one I want to see. So here's the chicken. 
It's thigh meat wrapped around breast meat. So it's uh, mayo, fermented chilies, roasted garlic, on top of a bed of greens. It's a whole chicken that has been turned into a sausage. Oh, it's delicious. Oh, it's amazing. There's loads of chili, like a paprika flavor. Mmm. Really extraordinary stuff. Can't possibly eat all of it. So I'm going to do what I know they do here, because it's what happened to me. It's the obviously, it's the welcome, it's the north way. I'm going to pass it on. Guys, can I, uh, can I give you that? Absolutely. I think it's how it works here. When I came in, they, the, the people at the next table gave me some food. I've got this amazing deep fried chicken, but I, I can't eat it all. Hopefully, uh, this review will get the word out a little bit more and uh, help us keep growing and get into like uh, some more markets. They did treat me very strangely when I first went in and all my food was delicious, but are they just too cool for my million dollar review? One Providence restaurant down, four more to go. But first, while I'm here, I want to get a sense of what this city is all about. Chicago is famous for being windy, New York never sleeps, and in Providence, they're famous, it seems, for eating snails. So my researcher, Julia, has brought me Oceanside to learn more about Providence's coastal culture. Fishing's a big part of the economy here. Julia says that Rhode Island's most famous dish is a salad made with snails, which are basically giant whelks. To me, it sounds fairly unappetizing, but chances are good I'll be eating it this week. When I eat snail salad in Rhode Island, is it, is it one of these? Yes. Yeah. The bait we use to catch these, we ah. call it horseshoe crab. It's a horseshoe crab. How yes. do you cut it? Cut you got, it. See the hatchet and the oh. Don't right want there. to see it. Don't want to see it. Don't want to see it. Don't do it. It's the worst thing I've ever seen. It won't hurt you at all. Oh, it yeah. does not bite. You're holding him by his most vulnerable part. Sure, why not? Can I, have a, can I have a go? Now that I know it hasn't killed you, that's very heavy. The native Indians ate those for years. They catch them, they come up on the beach. Just stretch his tail out. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not a Jedi yet. <laughs> Aye! Ah, it's not funny. No, it's not funny. Girl it's care. moving in a most disgusting way. <laughs> no. Julia, take hey. it. Take it. You want me to take, take it? it? Take it. <laughs> exactly. Why does it go all docile when you've got it? Oh, because I'm sweet. So am I. Nurturing. Just not, apparently, to horseshoe crabs. With that terrifying seaside visit out of the way, it's time for the next restaurant up for my million dollar review. It's called Los Andes. It's a South American restaurant in Elmhurst, an area just west of downtown. Sazim Khoury runs it with his sister and two brothers, and they're fiercely proud of their South American heritage. I mean, right when you walk into our restaurant, you can feel the passion and the love that we have for our business. The Khoury family's hard work has paid off, and Los Andes has lineups every night. But Chef Sazim knows that keeping his customers waiting is a bad habit that needs breaking. We don't know where to put the people. So that's basically our problem. He also knows he needs to expand Los Andes quickly. So we're going to have a ceviche bar upstairs. I mean, you're going to have a pisco bar. Chef Cezine needs your review to generate buzz for his second floor expansion and to validate all the hard work his family has done. Because we have to succeed. We have no other choice. Sorry, no, come on, off to you. It's clear from the moment I walk in, Los Andes is one busy restaurant. Um, right now it's going to be about 20 minutes. Um, would you like to take a seat at the bar? Unless there are any other good Peruvian restaurants around there. Um, no, I don't think so. I was looking at the fish tank. I was thinking which one I'm going to eat. I think I might have the big blue one up there. What's that? I know I'm here to review the dinner experience and not the bar scene, but I'm obviously in for a long wait, and I'm starving. Screw it, I'm getting a ceviche. I'm not so sure about the martini one. It's the tuna one on a plate. If you're stuck waiting for a table, do what you can to get a snack. Ceviche di azul. Cool, thank you. I'm in a restaurant, I might as well eat. I love that ceviche. Well, this is an unusual situation for me. Excuse me, sir. Your table's ready. Because having already eaten and drunk my fill at the bar, I've basically already had my evening. Welcome to Los Andes. My name is Brian, and I will be serving you this evening. And when my waiter arrives, he immediately launches into a piece of performance art. 
So, Mr. Giles, I'm sure you're very well aware since you did enjoy your appetizer at the bar. Here at Los Andes, we designate ourselves to strictly Peruvian and Bolivian cuisine. Good. And tonight, Mr. Giles, I offer you paiche. Now, paiche is a beautiful Amazonian fish. 500 to 550 pounds. 800 to yes, 550 pounds? Yes, sir. So, three times the size of me. Or maybe four the size of me. <laughs> <laughs> and Senor Brian has not finished his spiel yet. A beautiful pound and a half meal lobster stuffed with a delightful seafood assortment, shrimp, clams, mussels, fresh calamari, medallions of kibasa, Bolivian chorizo, and medallions of chicken breast. Did you say medallions of chicken breast? Yes, sir. On top of the lobster? Yes, sir. With all the... Within the paella, yes, sir. When something sounds that crazy, I have to order it. I, I will have a cocktail. After that, I need a drink. Sure thing. I, I've never seen so much energy and enthusiasm oh, yeah. uh, in a way to, in my life, literally anywhere in the world. That comes from living high in the Andes on, on very low oxygen, and they bring him down to sea level, and he just functions at 300% the rate of local people. Ah! I'm dying for a peek at that 500-pound fish Brian mentioned, so he agrees to take me to the kitchen to see a three-pound fillet on a plate. I'm disappointed. I'd imagined 10 chefs wrestling with the quarter-ton carcass of an Amazonian river monster. This fish has both lungs and it can be there in also really? pretty Yes, sir. I've never heard of a fish with lungs and gills, and I'm not sure if I want to eat one. Mr. Giles, beautiful stuffed lobster paella. Wow. Uh, you bought me a small portion, that's good. And Mr. Giles, I have a wonderful pescado lo macho done with paiche. And is this with a macho sauce on it? Yes, sir, it, it is with the macho sauce on it, yeah. He winked when he said macho. I don't know whether that was a kind of, like, a, it's not very macho, or it was a slightly sexy macho wink. So this is the, um, the paiche, the fish from the Amazon. It's quite bland for an Amazonian fish. It's not actually a very nice fish. I'll try the macho sauce. Yeah, it's okay. After all that hype, the 500-pound Amazonian air-breathing river monster was nothing special. Now, the ceviche I had at the bar was good, but on the strength of the paiche, this place could not win my million-dollar review. So it's all down to the lobster paella. That's good. It might be okay. If it's not, it's out. This week, I'm in Providence, Rhode Island, looking for a restaurant worthy of my million-dollar review. Today, I'm in Los Andes, a bustling Peruvian-Bolivian restaurant. My server, Brian, is entertaining, I'll give him that. But I was kept waiting an absurdly long time at the bar, and the macho-sourced 500-pound Amazonian paiche fish was really nothing special. It's not actually a very nice fish. For Los Andes to have a shot at my million-dollar review, this massive lobster paella needs to be excellent. Mmm. It's fantastic. And after I've eaten about 100 pounds of it, I might finally get to the lobster. It's actually great. But you can't really mess up lobster drenched with butter. My meal is officially over. I am as stuffed full of paella as my lobster used to be and still have a pile of untouched food on my plate. For me, that's easily the saddest thing at any meal. Can I have this to go? Sure thing. Can yeah. I offer you coffee or anything, You may, sir? you may, yeah. Do you like cream and sugar, sir? No. No cream, no sugar, black. just black. Sure thing. A lemon, lemon twist or anything go with no, your no, coffee? No, no, no. Does it trouble you that it's, I'm having my coffee so plain? No, 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 well, it you, does. If you like, you can put a whole paella in it. <laughs> Mr. Giles. <laughs> Thank you very much. What a top guy. What a top guy. Frankly, hearing him talking about my dinner was actually more exciting than eating it. I believe that Giles had a great time. This review is very important to us because we work so hard. We put so many hours into this restaurant. Pretty much bring a tear to my eye to see a successful review coming from Giles. It'll mean a lot to our family. Socially, I had a fantastic night. My server, Brian, was brilliant. The only question is, is the food, of which I have about 15 pounds left to take home, good enough for my million dollar review? Two Providence restaurants down, three more to go. I've had very little sleep thanks to nightmares about Amazonian river monsters, and now Julia's asked me to meet her at an ungodly hour in the morning. So, what's my next restaurant? You're going to Nick's on Broadway for brunch. For brunch? I cannot review brunch. Your dinners are booked up, so you're going to have to go for brunch. Nick's on Broadway is in Providence's renowned Italian neighborhood, Federal Hill. 
In fact, along with New York and Philly, it's one of celebrity chef Mario Batali's favorite Little Italy's in the country. The owner and chef is Derek Wagner, who bought an old diner with dreams of turning it into a modern restaurant. We serve extremely high quality food, gourmet or fine dining food, but trying to put it forth in a really affordable price point. But expensive ingredients and low prices don't add up to high profits. We're not charging standardly what it costs to create the things that we're making. Nick's consistently attracts big crowds for its popular brunches. When we first opened, we were only open for brunch. They now serve dinner as well, but it's not nearly as busy as brunch. Derek really needs your review to help bring in more diners for dinner. The idea of brunch seems to me bogus and stupid, artificially fashionable. There are guys sitting around with bottles of champagne for no apparent reason, and I guess they'd all just stay home in bed with the curtains drawn watching cartoons like young people used to, and let grown-ups get on with the business of eating serious food, you know, for lunch. Can I get you started with something to drink? A uh, coffee or a specialty cocktail? A cocktail in the morning? Can I tell you what I'd like first? Sure, certainly. I'd like a two-egg omelette, plain, nothing at all. Can absolutely do that for you. Thanks. Now, the reason that I've asked the waitress for a plain omelette is because a properly trained chef should be able to make a two-egg omelette that's beautiful. That is the test of any chef. If he can't make me a decent omelette, I might as well just leave. But instead of cooking my omelette, the chef wastes time by saying hello. Very nice to meet you, Giles. Happy uh, to have you here. You're going to make me my omelette? I'm going to make you the omelette. And if it's no good, I'll just walk. <laughs> no pressure. I wouldn't be laughing if I were him. And then, instead of cooking my omelette, the chef sends out dishes from his dinner menu. This is getting frustrating. A couple of little teasers before your om omelette <laughs> arrives. <laughs> so I've got a kind of a tartare here. Yeah, but... it's, it's um, a bone marrow and onion jam. And then this is our oxtail uh, beef heart and beef shank terrine with our house mustard. And what about that's a sort of with a, yeah. a kind of mustardy type? Yeah, it's a sabayon with horseradish and roasted mussels. And this is just a mignonette with some pickled root vegetables. It all looks delicious. Quite strange coming after a cup of coffee to throw this down. There's no questioning the minds of chefs. So you had said no to a cocktail, mm -hmm. but I didn't think you could say no to a glass of sparkling wine. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Oldest trick in the book, get the critic drunk. That's like a wine-flavored oyster omelet. I suppose you could call it breakfast food. Bone marrow. You really just taste the onion. A bit in a good way. Or possibly in a bad way. So, I think this is some sort of cheap fatty cut of beef pressed into a terrine. And phenomenal. This is like something you would have at a, at a, at a, at a little bistro in, in Lyon, sitting outside, you know, with a glass of white wine and looking at the cathedral. Not surrounded by vinyl toasting hipsters with coffee, uh, but by French people going, ho, 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 ho. And they, this is just terrific. They would love it. With every dish I taste, I'm getting less irritated and more intrigued. Although I still haven't eaten anything I actually ordered. So he's fed me a lot of things that I didn't really want. And they were great. But I told him that I wanted to test his skills on a plain two-egg omelette. Service. And finally, it's here. Any real chef worth his salt can make a basic two-egg omelette. If this guy can't deliver on that, he may lose his shot at my million-dollar review. Quite surprised, as expects to be fluffy. I think it's the thinnest omelet I've ever seen. Nick's on Broadway is a restaurant famous for its brunch here in Providence, Rhode Island. So I've made a point of ordering a plain two-egg omelet because a chef worthy of my review will do that perfectly. But instead of cooking my omelet, Chef Derek has been sending out samples from his dinner menu. A clever little ploy, but it will not throw me off the scent, because if this omelette is no good, he will have a hell of a job earning my million dollar review. Pardon me, and the omelette for you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Quite surprised, as expects to be fluffy. This is, you know, completely flat. I'll see what it tastes like. I think it's the thinnest omelette I've ever seen. I've got credit cards that are thicker than this. It tastes of the oil it was fried in. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. 
I was expecting it to be fluffier. We usually normally make them in about three eggs a piece, so the pan. Oh, so there's not are, enough eggs. Yeah, but the pan. The pan's quite wide, yeah, so it spreads. Yeah, so but you hadn't beaten lots and lots of air into it. You don't like it to be too. No, not. We usually um, we'll beat a little bit of air into it, but because we're you know we're doing so many. When it comes to cooking, don't make excuses. No one cares. I'm going to give Derek one more chance to redeem himself. More than anything in the world, I love cassoulet. Yes. How do you like your eggs? That Nowhere is. near my cassoulet. Yes. <laughs> A cassoulet with an egg on top. In southwest France, you could go to prison for that. I've ordered the cassoulet because I am the world's leading expert on cassoulet. It's basically a haricot bean base, but it seems to me that almost any dish on the east coast of the United States, you can chuck an egg on and call it breakfast. And that's what they're doing with this. I mean, the last place in the world I'd expect to see an egg will be on top of a steaming cauldron of beans, pork fat and duck. So let's see if you can bring it back from the frankly cataclysmic omelette. Service. Wow. It's unquestionably a cassoulet with an egg on the top. This guy seems determined to feed me whatever he wants. The perfect poached egg. Quite what it's doing on top of my lunch is another matter. He's used wine in the cassoulet, which is why it's sweet. By making it sweet, it means that the egg fits in and it turns it into a brunch dish. So it's not a thing I would have set out to try and do in the first place. But if I had, I couldn't have done it any better than that. That's a very good idea. It seems like Giles had a really nice time. It's always tough to tell with a critic, but he ate everything, which is always a good sign. Well, that place has certainly persuaded me that brunch might be a worthwhile thing. That's some of the best food I've had in Rhode Island. But the chef failed my omelette test, so can he really win my million-dollar review? That's three out of five Providence restaurants vying for my review. The next morning, it's time for restaurant number four, and Julia wants to meet in one of the Italian-style gondolas that, for some reason, operate in the canals of Providence. Do you know, I've been to Venice a couple of times, and I've never got on a gondola. No? It always struck me as a bit of a touristy thing to do. So only natural that when I finally come to Providence, Rhode <laughs> Island, I should, I should get on one. Yeah. So what's my next restaurant? The restaurant that you're going to now is actually an Italian restaurant that's been in Providence since 1956. Are we taking the gondola all the way there? Yes. Yes, Giles, we are. Cool. Like Nick's, the last restaurant you went to, Joe Marzilli's Old Canteen is located in the Italian neighborhood Federal Hill. We are the oldest uh, family-run restaurant in the state of Rhode Island. Joe Marzilli opened it in 1956, and now it's run by his son, Sal, who continues to serve his father's menu of classic Italian-American dishes. I didn't change anything. I kept things the same way. You walk in the door, you're just not another customer. You're a person, you're a face. Uh, you're a family. The restaurant's the same, but things have changed in the neighborhood over the years. There's 44 restaurants from where I am, a uh, half mile strip, 44 restaurants. So there's a lot of competition up here. And with the economy over the last seven, eight years, the slower times, which are normally slow, are a little more slower than normal. Sal really needs your review to help the old canteen stand out from the competition in Federal Hill. He wants to keep the restaurant going to honor his father's memory. Carrying on my dad's plan is one of the most important things in my life. Whenever I'm in a new city, I try to eat with a local. And today I'm dining with legendary Rhode Island chef and television personality, Frank Terranova. He's a senior instructor at the elite culinary school, Johnson & Wales University, here in Providence. He's Italian and he's eaten here dozens of times, which makes him the perfect lunch companion. Wow, it's a very pink restaurant. Hasn't changed a bit in 60 years. What's so good about it? It has all world food. Uh -huh. The recipes like veal steak or an assobuco or a stuffed congili, these are all world recipes that grandmothers used to make. So this is, this is the Italian part of Providence, is it? Yes, it is, yep. This is the mecca for Italian. He's not kidding. I know that Providence has a huge Italian community and most of it seems to be having lunch in this restaurant. In fact, there is an actual Italian family having an actual communion party in the actual corner. I wouldn't dare say this out loud, 
but the whole thing feels like a deleted scene from a mafia movie. If you look at this menu, this thing's up here you're not going to find anywhere in the state of Rhode Island. Marinated eel, you're not going to find that anywhere on the planet. The menu, in very old-school fashion, is enormous, with well over 100 starters and mains to choose from. Gentlemen, antipasto, then your choice of soup, minestrone, chicken stracciarelle. We have uh, sautéed escarole, lightly done with garlic and olive oil. I also have uh, zucchini with wild mushrooms. We have tripe, we have merluzzo. We also have a wonderful ossobuco. I have a snail salad available. I also have stuffed squid. This waiter is amazing. He's memorized the entire menu. Would it be quicker to ask you what you don't have? <laughs> Probably, yes. Always invest in waiting staff with personality. They're worth their weight in gold. Frank and I order five seafood dishes plus the house speciality Osobuco. Unfortunately for me, Frank also insists I have the snail salad, made with the giant whelks I saw with Julia at the seaside. Yuck! That snail salad sounds just as disgusting now as it did before. I just don't like big, wet, cold, rubbery, fishy things. <laughs> OK, cool. I'll be right back. Thank you. I'm starting to dread the thought of eating this giant snail salad. So, of course, it shows up almost immediately. Wow. It's almost an entree. I've never had this thing before. Those are big pieces of snail, and they look really rubbery. You're in the East Coast, you're in Rhode Island, you're in the Italian area, then go with the... You have to go with it. If I don't look like I'm enjoying this, I'll insult not only my guest, but the whole state of Rhode Island. This week, I'm in Providence, Rhode Island, looking for one restaurant deserving of my million-dollar review. Today, I'm in Providence's Italian neighborhood, Federal Hill, dining with legendary Rhode Island chef Frank Terranova at the 60-year-old family restaurant Joe Marzilli's Old Canteen. I'm about to eat my first bite of Rhode Island's famous snail salad, and I'm really hoping I don't hate it. I've never had this thing before. They're cut very thin, so they're nice and tender. It's very meaty. Yes. With my eyes closed, I would not have known that that was a snail. The very slight taste of liver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's extraordinary. It is not like anything I've ever eaten before. And to be honest, I probably won't order it ever again. Still a bit too rubbery for me. Snail salad notwithstanding, Old Canteen's seafood dishes are impressive. Look at the texture. It looks like a piece of a chicken filet. It's great. I mean, it's very good. Little next to Giovanni, gentlemen. Mmm. That's seafood. Yeah, and your snail is OK. Yep. But this is the stuff that's worth... Well, uh... this is... You can taste the actual sea. I was expecting heavy, old-school Italian-American cuisine. Your haddock Sicilian. A little spice on there for you, sir. But everything so far has been fresh and light. The merluzzo for you. Thank you. Let me reach over and grab yes. a little. Looks crispy. It is very crispy. Delicious. Yep. That's very good. Very nice. Fresh piece of white fur. It's a nice fish. piece of fish, yes. But will this osobuco have that same light touch? The osobuco. That's a signature plate. Now it will remove the large tree of rosemary. Yep. And it all falls apart beautifully under the fork. Look at that. Show yeah. us how you do it. There we've got the marrow. I mean, I do love that stuff. Yeah. So take a piece of meat and just get the marrow on it, and then it's just. You're a pro at this. Mm. And it just has that buttery, rich fat. I mean, it's the fattiest fat that there is. Right. That's like that's probably like 150 calories in one spoon. Well, you, when, so how many times are you going to have Ten it? Ten times that's a day not... I would have it oh, if that, I, well, that's... I could. <laughs> I think the day went well. I think Giles had a great time. I'm very, very happy in the way the afternoon went. And I, I, really, uh, I really do think we'll get a great review, and I'm hoping for that great review. Well, I came to this place because it's a famous old restaurant in the Italian part of town. It's got a good reputation, the waiters are great, it looks good. I just didn't think the food would necessarily be all that. And it was. It was, it was really very good, and I think it's got a good chance of my million-dollar review. It's time for my final restaurant in Providence. So, trusty assistant, what is my next restaurant? You are going to the Dorrance. The Dorrance? What's a Dorrance? Dorrance is the street that it's on. 
It's in Down City, Providence, a historic downtown neighborhood which, thanks to recent redevelopment, is now the urban center of Providence. The Dorrance is owned by Regina and Jean Lester, and before they became restaurateurs, they became family. She happens to be my mother-in-law. I married her oldest son. And now we're business partners. A little bit of a cradle robber, and, um, or a cougar. The Dorrance is in an old bank building, and it's an absolutely stunning space. It was a hot restaurant with a great bar when it opened in 2010, but then it lost its chef. He's the one that basically put us on the map with the menu, but he went right around the corner and opened a new restaurant. Without a chef, Jean and Regina filled their kitchen with culinary students and hired a consultant to redesign their menu. And while people still love the Dorrance for its magnificent space and craft cocktails, its reputation for food just isn't the same. Jean and Regina are really hoping you'll love their new menu and give it your review. I think a great review from Giles would be everything to us. Hopefully yeah. we'd buy the building and have a boutique hotel upstairs, and that's what we're looking to do. One upside of the global economic downturn has been a lot of beautiful old banks being freed up for use as restaurants. The downside is they rarely manage to stop feeling like banks. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'd like to open a bank account. Like oh, bank wait, it's not a bank it's anymore. Not a bank anymore. Oh, in that case, I'll have a drink. <laughs> sure, absolutely. I have a couple seats at the bar right over here. How are we doing, Matt? Fine, fine, fine. Very good indeed. How are you? Not too bad. I'm here for dinner, but I thought I'd have a, a quick me, drink. You like gin? You like tequila? Rum? Yeah, yeah Is there all, all of that. Could... What's a good thing before dinner to get me in the mood? Something that's got Campari, something that's uh, going to really... Campari sounds good. Yeah, bitter things. Yeah. Lower my blood sugar, get me in the yeah, mood. Let's, yeah, let's get your mouth waking up. These little alcohol droppers and sprays are probably intended for making drinks, but I'm going to assume they're here for me to sample. There you go, my friend. One serious business. And you don't want me to sort of season it myself with this selection? No, no. I would try and steer clear of that. Mm. <laughs> Do you have any other booze sprays in there? We've got absinthe, which... Ooh, have you? Oh, wow. Let me have a go. Yeah. I don't know what kind of insurance you have. <laughs> that didn't work. This is the most fun I've ever had. <laughs> no wonder this place is popular for its bar. Hey, we'll I want you to enjoy your dinner. I will take my serious business with me. I, I might take an aerosol, you know, just <laughs> diving up. Hi. How are you, sir? Very good indeed. Excellent. Is uh, that me? Right here, yep. Yeah. Get the chair for you. Once I'm away from the fun at the bar, I get a clear look at the absolutely palatial and somewhat empty room that I'm in. Well, I, what I need is a meal that will measure up to this amazing environment. So what's the best thing? The chicken three ways. It sounds faintly uh, kinky, but yeah, chicken three ways. <laughs> I'll go for that. And so what should I start with? Spanish-style octopus almost Spanish looks like a Duke Lord's octopus, entree. Phenomenal house-made chorizo. I will order some wine. I guess you're going to have to take this away from me. One last. OK, you All take right. it away. Thank you. He took my absinthe away. Yeah. Oh, it's gone. Oh. Spanish-style octopus. Wow, that looks amazing. Baby octopus, my favorite kind. You were so desperate to get it to me that you didn't have time to take it out of the pan. <laughs> well, this looks great. We've got chorizo, which is going to give it a good fatty heft. Five little baby octopi. Very, very simple. No technique at all. I mean, just ingredients stuck in a pan and fried. Is it true you haven't got a head chef? We had our young uh, Johnson & Wales graduate students but... Uh, we recently promoted one of our most talented chefs to executive chef. Now, this is a fine dish, but it's not very precise. It's just ingredients thrown in a pan. It's a bit too runny. There's all this juice left over. They haven't really thickened it. Is there a real intelligence at work in the kitchen? Is there a master plan? Only the main course can tell us. I'm in Providence, Rhode Island, at a restaurant called The Dorrance. It's in a big, beautiful old bank, and it has a great bar. But it's recently lost the head chef who put it on the map. I'm here to find out if their new menu is good enough for my million-dollar review. And here we have your chicken three ways. Mm-hmm. I count three. Breast, coffee of leg, unborn egg. <laughs> Looks delicious. Bon appetit. It's good, thank you. Well, my food has finally arrived in this disconcertingly empty restaurant where possibly the clientele has fallen away 
along with the old chef. They don't have a real chef in the kitchen. They've tried to persuade me that they have, but it's just some kid from Johnson & Wales Culinary College around the corner they've promoted. It's just bare chicken. It's been fried on one side and then roasted. Not filled with compliments. OK, so to the cut, it's juicier than I thought it was going to be. I'll give it that. It's very, very salty, which is a sign of youth. It has, from the coconut and the rice and the sort of spicy, quite vinegary feel to these green beans, giving it a, an Asian flavour, which suggests all different kinds of imagination running riot in the kitchen. I think my advice to them would be to get a serious, actual chef in residence on the premises as soon as possible. Otherwise, this is going to be a place where people come to have a drink and a great time and then go somewhere else to eat. Well, hopefully we will get the million dollar review. We brought all our passion to this restaurant and want it to succeed. Mm. And we're not a big corporate restaurant. We're just a little family restaurant. Even though it's in, a in big such space. a big, beautiful yeah. space, we really are just a small family business. Now, I'm not certain there's a guiding intelligence at the heart of that menu or that kitchen, but food is not everything. It's a beautiful place, it's amazing service, the cocktails were great, and as a package, it could well measure up to a million dollar review. It's my final day in Providence, and the time has come for the writing of my review. My researcher, Julia, has taken me to breakfast to help me mull over my choices. Tell me about North. What did you think? At first, I thought this is a bit strange. I started off thinking hipster losers, and by the end of the meal, I thought the cooking was absolutely terrific. Oh, it's delicious. What about the old canteen? Loved that. I mean, that reeked of old Italian providence. And I hadn't expected to, because I thought it was just going to be a lot of red sauce and, like, tedious food. You're a pro at this. Mm. What about Los Andes? Los Andes is a crazy place. It's obviously very, very popular. I had to wait a very long time for my table. It's a vibrant place, isn't it? Lots of high energy. Oh, yeah, the waiter was so high energy that I thought he was going to explode. This is made with feta cheese, evaporated milk, saltine crackers, and ají amarillo, a native Peruvian pepper. I ate this farmed Amazonian white fish called uh, piche, which I got to say, I'd leave it in the Amazonian river. Talk to me about Nick's on Broadway. He's undoubtedly a very good chef. I set him one simple test, which was to cook me a nice, fluffy two-egg omelette. And, you know, he plots it. This was a thin, flabby thing. It looked like a skin graft. He's right? been working so hard. Hard work does not get my million dollar review. However, good cooking does, and he gave me lots of that as well. What did you think of the Dorrance? The Dorrance, an amazing space. But without an executive chef, is there a central intelligence at work in the kitchen? Just ingredients stuck in a pan and fried. I'm not sure, in the end, that the food measured up to the space. I've eaten at five restaurants, but only one can get my million dollar review. The question is, exactly whose fortunes and lives will be changed by my fateful words? My review is written, and today it goes live in the Huffington Post. Whose life will it change? Will it be North? Joe Marzilli's Old Canteen? Or Los Andes? Could it be Nick's on Broadway? or the Dorrance. <laughs> Nick's on Broadway won my review because he took a risk and played the game. <laughs> I don't like brunch, and Derek intuitively wouldn't let me eat it. Instead, he cooked some of the most original and delicious food I've eaten in a long time. And we snuck him some dinner plates, which I didn't know how he was going to take, and, and he seemed to really like them a lot. Phenomenal. My goal has always been to, you know, to try to shine that same special light on our, on our dinner service that we have on our brunch service to show people how special and how good it is. So this will definitely help with that. Based on my experience, Nick's on Broadway really deserves to be a Rhode Island dinner destination. Nick's on Broadway definitely earned my million dollar review.